Something crazy happened to R&B during the 90s. 94 was undoubtedly the pivotal year where everything came together. As the genre began its original shift into a pop realm, new artists were coming to the forefront in a big way. Each was incredibly talented, delivering a refreshingly new take on classic R&B. This arguably set the standard that artists of today proceed to follow. Even the veterans were finding their unique sound amid new talent. Welcome to Major Key Unlimited, what R&B in 1994 looked like. Today, we're looking at the era of 94 with the loudest R&B albums of that time. Who is the most remarkable artist of the time? Make sure to watch till the end to find out. In 1991, Seal made a breakthrough name for himself with the song Crazy off his self-titled debut album. He bounced back three years later though with an album of the same title and a song that would change his career. Kiss from a Rose was not only the hot standout single from his follow-up album, but it also was the theme song for Batman Forever and won three Grammy Awards in 1996 for Record of the Year, Song of the Year, plus the best male pop vocal performance. Other tracks off Seal 2, like Prayer for the Dying and Don't Cry, sealed his fate as a dominant force within soul pop music. The album reached number 15 on the Billboard 200 chart and received four platinum statuses. Before Aaliyah became the colossal success that she was, Baby Girl was a teenager with a style described as street but sweet. Her mentor, R. Kelly, helped craft her debut album, Age Ain't Nothing But a Number, an archetypal project of sorts that brought significant elements of the New Jack Swing era and mixed them with hip-hop rhythms. While Aaliyah's voice played a dominant role in her success, it was her style, complete with bandanas, baggy jeans, and an exposed navel that showed the world you could be feminine but still hang with the fellas. The album featured two hit singles with the top 10 charting Back and Forth and At Your Best, You Are Love. Both singles were certified gold by the RIAA. R&B had many new Jack Swing era veterans coming through to grow as the subgenre was slowly being put to rest. A pioneer of the subgenre, Teddy Riley, formed Blackstreet following his extended stint as a frontman for the trio Guy. The quartet's eponymous debut was filled with soulful rhythms that proved Riley was a chameleon, but also placed him back into the race as SWV, Silk, H-Town, and others were making groups a hot commodity once again. The album peaked at number 52 on the Billboard 200 chart. By April 1995, it was certified platinum in sales by the RIAA after sales exceeding 1 million copies in the United States. Two months after In Living Color aired its final episode, Jamie Foxx quickly transformed from a comedic improv actor to R&B crooner. His debut album, Peep This, may have flown under the radar for most since it took Foxx more than 10 years to be recognized for his singing acting chops. But it was a clear example of how music and film can go hand in hand at times. Fox also wrote most of his debut album showing he can write the script when he's not reading it. The album peaked at number 78 on the Billboard 200 and received mixed to negative reviews. I have waited for so long. A group of only two women was a unique commodity within R&B outside of Zane. When Cassandra Lucas and Carissa Rose hit the scene, they had everyone buzzing their sexy time tunes. Their big single off their debut project was Stroke You Up, penned by and featuring R. Kelly that scored the girls an instant hit at number three on the charts. They kept it going with some mid-level successes like Fooling Around and Keep It Right There. However, Changing Faces would come back a few years later with their hit single Get Out and astonish everyone with their use of acronyms and spelling. Still, it was a hot song. Changing Faces peaked at 25 on the US Billboard 200. It was a certified gold in sales by RIAA 
after sales exceeding 500,000 copies in the United States. If you're not particularly aware of Usher's catalog, you may assume You Make Me Wanna was his first single, and My Way was his first album. Not true. Before that, Young Raymond was being tutored by Puffy and dropped his eponymous debut album in 1994. While the album received some lukewarm reviews, it wasn't because of Usher's potential. Instead, it was an observation of how the young singer's entrance could have been more solidly defined. Usher debuted at number 167 on the U.S. Billboard 200 chart and sold over 200,000 copies in the U.S. today. He went on three years later to bring us the real Usher, but let us never forget his youthful debut, because had it never happened, then maybe we would never have the superstar Usher of today. Under the careful tutelage of Michael Bivens, Boys to Men created a sizable buzz with their debut album, Cooley High Harmony. However, their second studio album, too, marked a changing point for the quartet. The project gave the group a big name as solid classics like I'll Make Love to You and On Bended Knee propelled Boys to Men to be the third artist to replace themselves with number singles in almost 30 years. Before them, it was Elvis and the Beatles. While the group achieved a lot, their multi-platinum success from two remains a significant milestone in Boys to Men's history. Many new acts were brewing in the infamous 90s era of R&B, but living legends were also doing their thing. Anita Baker came through with her fifth studio album in 94, and with it, we heard some hits like Body and Soul and Baker's gorgeous rendition of My Funny Valentine. The album was nominated for many Grammy Awards that following year, including Best R&B Album, but took home the Best Female R&B Vocal Performance Grammy for the track, I Apologize. The album also peaked at number three on the U.S. Billboard 200 and number one on the Billboard Top R&B Hip Hop Chart and was certified double platinum, giving Baker her fourth platinum selling album. Sister's first and last project flew severely under the radar for many. While the group had tons of talent, they merely got lost in the sauce with everything else happening in that fateful year of R&B. Jodeci's Devante Swing and Timberland primarily produced their project, so the beats were rock solid. Still, it didn't move mountains, but one group member did. Missy Elliott was part of Sister and moved on to a solo career, working heavily with Timberland. Just think, had Missy never arrived with Sister, we may have never met the Super Duper Fly star. Although the album received positive reviews from music critics, the work peaked at 84 on the charts and was eventually shelved due to the first single not having much success. In 1994, after eight solid projects, Luther Vandross released an album full of cover songs. What made songs so ingenious was that while the R&B legend was singing everyone else's records, he renovated them in such a way that you forgot about the original recordings. Songs like Killing Me Softly, Ain't No Stopping Us Now, and Always and Forever were legendarily remixed and set a new bar for anyone who dared try to recover the songs. When Luther Vandross performs a song, you're better off not even bothering to try to one-up him. <laughs> Just saying. Songs gave Vandross four nominations at the 1995 Grammy Awards. The album also peaked at number five on the Billboard 200 and two at the top R&B hip hop albums chart, receiving two platinum statuses. Jason's lyric film is one of those classic cult flicks that still sits at the top of folks' favorite movies lists. The soundtrack corralled talent from all corners of hip hop and R&B music drawing together artists who were already doing their thing and having them create new songs for the score. Artists like LL Cool J, Tony Tony Tone, Scarface, Brian McKnight, all delivered excellent cuts. However, KC from Jodeci's stellar solo rendition of If You Think You're Lonely Now was perhaps the greatest standout cut that KC could perform, even during Jodeci sets. 
The album peaked at number 17 on the Billboard 200 and topped the top R&B hip hop albums chart. When Brandy released her self-titled debut album, she was beginning her acting career, co-starring on the sitcom Thea. This album drew a line in the sand for young Brandy Norwood. While she went on to get her own sitcom, Moesha, her debut proved she was on the brink of becoming a full-fledged R&B star, simultaneously combining various elements like pop and hip-hop into her sound. I Wanna Be Down was the humble debut while Baby, Best Friend, and Broken Hearted all contributed identically to the rise of Brandy. Robin Thicke helped write on this album as a major footnote contributing to a track called Love Is On My Side. While initial sales were slow, the album reached the top 20 of the US Billboard 200 and was certified four times platinum by the RIAA selling over 2 million copies in the United States. It seems strange to mention the Holiday album as a groundbreaking project for 1994, but Mariah Carey's Merry Christmas is an exception to the rule. MC's Christmas album is the best-selling Christmas album of all time, with staggering sales of over 5.3 million copies. Carrie was at the height of her superstardom when she released this little collection of singing holiday classics like Silent Night and Joy to the World. The biggest standout is the modern classic Christmas cut, All I Want for Christmas is You. You still play that one every December, just admit it. <laughs> How many top-selling and totally incredible artists can you pack on one soundtrack with original material? Nearly 20 is the answer. The soundtrack for the film A Low Down Dirty Shame was full of R&B and hip-hop heavyweights who were all collectively popping that year. Artists like Zane, Aaliyah, Silk, Changing Faces, R. Kelly, Tevin Campbell, High Five, Souls of Mischief, UGK, Eric Sermon, and Redman provided original cuts, making for a monster compilation LP. Let's also send respect to the group Nothing Nice, who made their name with the song Down For Whatever, which got its fair share of shine before and after this soundtrack arrived. The soundtrack peaked at 70 on the Billboard 200 chart. It was certified gold in sales by the RIAA after sales exceeding 500,000 copies in the United States. TLC's debut album, ooh. <laughs> the TLC tip was cute, quirky, and mildly seductive, but the Atlanta trio had much more in store. Their follow-up album, Crazy Sexy Cool, was their most successful as t Boz, Left Eye, and Chili traded condoms on clothes and big hats for satin pajamas and honest talk about love and lust. Sure, songs like Creep and Digging on You gave TLC a sturdy rebranding and made them more sexy than cutesy. However, it took a monster called Waterfalls to tell the world just how big TLC could become. The group made history with Crazy Sexy Cool. It became the best-selling album by a girl group in America and the second best-selling album ever by a girl group worldwide while first place goes to the Spice Girl. The album also won a Grammy for R&B Album of the Year, with Creep having a Grammy for the best R&B performance by a duo or group. Mary J. Blige got our attention with her debut, What's the 411? But it was her follow-up project, My Life, that kept us all here to stay. Mary changed her baseball caps and jerseys for hot pants and skirts, branding herself as that R&B chick. With production primarily from Puffy and Chucky Thompson, the project was geared towards moving units. My Life delivered bangers like You Bring Me Joy and Be Happy, but she grabbed the attention of the world with her cover of I'm Going Down. That song not only showed Mary's range, but it gave us all a clue as to the superstar power she possessed. 
Being the breakthrough album, My Life reached the top 10 on the Billboard 200 chart, peaking at number 7 and debuting at number 1 on the top R&B and hip-hop albums chart. In 1996, the album was nominated for Best R&B Album at the Grammy Awards. The album was also certified triple platinum by the RIAA, with 3 million copies sold in the United States. It also won the 1995 Billboard Music Award for Top R&B Album. But what do you think? What was the best R&B album in 1994? Was it the golden era of R&B? Share your opinion in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss an upload. And you can enjoy the excellent content we send your way. As always, this is Dollar Black signing out.